it's uh, <laughs> yo. Is you know, it's the only thing better than one L Gates is two L Gates is. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Bro, how you doing, man? Good, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful, man. I'm, I'm blessed. You know, all that good stuff. How you guys doing? Really good, man. He's, uh, he's just got his teeth whitened. Very white teeth. Hey. Getting ready. Hey. Getting ready to get hitched. Yeah, you'll get see. Back time. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. He's got a, the you can't see it from the front, too, but the fade on the back of his neck is very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got Hair's gone. Back. Yeah. Hey, man. Good. Congrats, bro. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's been pretty uh, fun launching the EP so far. Um, like the Bad Bitches record did great, and the um, uh, You Better, the first single from our EP, has been popping uh, off. Viral okay. videos have been hitting, and uh, I'm really, I'm really, really excited about somebody, man. Like that record is just like uh, that was you were really in the pocket when you made that one. Thank you, um, man. Thank Yo, can, you, thank can you tell us about the process of making it? So, John uh, sent me sent me a couple of tracks, and I was just like, you know, vibing to the first. It was the first track out of the pack, so I was like, whoa! I started hearing things, you know, couple little references and stuff. But when I got to the mic, everything just came out. You know what I mean? And it was organic. It was it was it was like that feeling, like you know. Um, I seen an interview when Michael Jackson. They was asking him like, "How do you know? How do you do these songs?" He's like, "I just hear it, and I heard it." You know what I mean? And I just I was like, "What is he talking about?" But I got that moment, so that was pretty cool. But all in all, it was it was a it was a great experience. Where where'd you record it? I recorded it at my house. Nice. My, I got my house set up. You know what I mean? So. Nice. What uh, what mic are you using? TM one oh two. Oh nice. That's what's up. That's what I got too. I love that mic. Hey. Yeah, yeah man. It, it hasn't hasn't filled me yet. Yeah, it, yeah, it really sounds uh sounds great. And uh I'm I'm so hype about those remixes, man. They're, they really came out nice. Oh man, uh I can't wait for those. Like those it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a whole different type of vibe, you know what I mean? Two different types of vibes is, especially with the um what you what you call it? The se the sexy one and the uh I forgot how you said it, but you was like, We got a sexy version and then we got the party version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was a bedroom playlist or sexy time playlist or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexy time. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it, it's good. I'm really excited about the the merch too. People have been really pumped on the uh, the merch so far. It's been really well received. We sold a skateboard too, so hey. oh, snap. Yeah, that's on that. That's yeah. it. Oh man, that's lit, man. What? Um, just want to know when the crew neck's coming out, man. I'm, I don't know. I'm a crew neck freak. Like I love crew necks, bro. So. Oh, you just gotta check it. Check the link. Check, yeah, that's it. Yeah. check the link y'all check that link pretty uh I, i'm pretty hype on on the way it's been received and everything and we got um on juno download juno download spotlighted producer dojo as the label of the month on juno download oh, in the hip-hop category i just found that out this Damn, morning that's and sick, it's bro. like on the strength of uh, the ep so that's, that's all nice. sick, man, that oh, we're like big. We're right at the top of the hip hop category all month. Hey, that's hey. Yeah, big so, up, man. Big yeah, so the big shouts out to uh, Aaron Simpson and uh, to to Dov, uh, Dov One from Booty and Cyberset. They they were the ones who hooked that up and uh, nice. really awesome. appreciate that. Yeah, it's definitely gonna help. Really gonna help. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's lit, man. That is definitely lit. Yeah, man. So, uh, what are you, uh, what are you up to next? Any uh, upcoming projects you're working on? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I have a few projects, man. Uh, so for the next six months, I have um, I got somebody coming out with you guys. Um, then with the the other track. Toxic. toxic yeah yeah toxic's on the toxic coming up next and then after that i have a joint project with my partner uh his name is kate get lit it's called catch the wave Two. nice uh, that's coming out and then after that i have my uh, actual project myself is titled let me know what you think you know what i mean so i got a whole roll out of you know music for the rest so of the year let me know what you think is that like a ep a mixtape album like what's up uh i say i say it's like an album i want to say because it's 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 just a, a side of me that I haven't shown. Cool. You know, as far as the music aspect, uh, more melodic opposed to just the rapping gates. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just want to let, you know, people know that I, I can do a lot of things other than rap. 
Yeah, yeah I like it when you yeah. sing, man. I mean, uh, somebody came out great. Like that's just that's hey, a man. hit. That's hey, a hit. Man. And like, I cannot wait. I, I had like a, 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 you know, I played it a bunch of shows, and people really liked it at my shows. But like, they came to see me, you know. Right. And the other day, it was at a friend of mine's, like, was having like a birthday party, and there was just like open decks and like a bunch of people that I didn't know. So I was like, oh. I can test it on people who don't give a shit at all. Right. That's a good test, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tested it, and people who don't give a shit at all noticed and checked what it was. So, what? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. that's a fire. It yeah. just gets stuck in your head. And hey, man. And it's... Get together organically. You going up, y'all? Yeah. The sound yep. of summertime. That's, it just yep. feels like... Definitely a summertime like, song. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited, dude. I don't know what else to say. Like, it's, it's good content, man. And I, that's what I, you know, try to strive for is just, like, substance. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of songs out here don't really have substance anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel that, too. You know, like, a lot of time people are just, like... It's like a bunch of branding and then just, like, words that they like. You know? Yeah, it's a shining dark. You have all this branding, but the content is, you know not up to par at the end of the day you know the branding is gone it's gonna get in people's faces but a lot of attention the attention is gonna die out very fast you know yeah yeah definitely but uh but yeah maintaining maintaining a steady stream you know that's what's done of course, done. of course consistency is the key yeah, and, and good good quality music yeah, Word, it's got to be quality for sure yes sir yes sir yes sir oh so, hey um uh not i'm sure some people who are are watching this know but uh, not all of the people will know, um, you know, that your your dad, DJ Scratch, from NWA. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was it like having your dad be in NWA? Um. Well, basically, it, it was cool. You know, when I was young, a lot of people walk up to me like, "Do you know who your dad is?" You don't know who your dad is. I'm like, "Yeah, I know. It's my dad." You know what I'm saying? But everybody looked at him like, you know like big you know what i mean so i used to be in all kind of huge studios not even know where i am paramount studios and i remember like going into everybody's like sessions not knowing who these people are asking for like quarters and stuff and <laughs> they used to amazing. give me like they used to give me like wads of money like and i didn't know why like why do people got a lot of money so i figured like okay maybe if i go in another door i probably get some more money for this arcade it was only one game like i think it was called like arch rivals or some a basketball game or something like it was old basketball but all in all i used to go through all these sessions and they used to give me money so it was always fun going to the studio after that nice <laughs> yeah, getting no paid since the jump that's yeah. what's up yeah yeah i will say i used to i used to hate the studio at one point in the time of my life as a kid like you know the repetition and you're like why i used to ask my dad like why we got to play this song over and over like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean Fun. yeah so he's like you know it's, it's a process man you know mixing in and i didn't know what he was talking about but you know i understand now of course but i guess it got instilled, instilled in me to you know really be a studio head after that that's what's up that's what's up. So, hey, have you have you played somebody for your dad? Oh yeah, he loves it. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, like, yeah. he's like, man, that's hot. That's that's hot. What's that's up. Hot. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and I love the um the Albi remix too, man. He really turned it out on that remix. Like on a PA, it just is right. There. I'll be killed it. I'll be killed it. I love the like the, the all the instruments and everything, the horns. Yeah, he added so many different touches, yeah. and they feel like they were always there when yeah. you hear. Yeah, it. Oh, like that's like part of genius. You know, it's just like you're like, oh, of course. You yep. Know? So yep. Then it's and then uh, like people who don't know about making stuff I always feel like, oh, they just did the obvious thing. It's not that big a deal, and it's like it wasn't obvious before they yeah. did it. Right. You think it's obvious yeah. now, but it wasn't obvious before they did it. The whole structure was perfect. I got some, um, I will say, me and Albie got something cooking up soon. Yeah? You know? Yeah. What are you cooking up? I got a track come, uh, coming soon, man. Yeah, what kind, track of, kind of vibe is this? Like, like hip-hop, R&B, weird electronic music? Uh, I say it's like kind of like a hip-hop electronic. The way he did the transitions is kind of crazy. So Yeah, he always That's has a lot of transitions. Yeah, the transitions is crazy. So I'm, I'm uh, going to see what I can do. 
when it comes to really like jumping in and out of transitions, you know what I mean? And making it sound, you know, the way it's supposed to. Be. But when you're like, you know, when you're, when you're trying to find the way something is supposed to sound, you know, there's times when it's obvious, but there's times when it's not so obvious. Uh, right. Do you have any strategies for like, when you're trying to find, like, let's say you're working on something for a while and you're like, oh, I just don't know how this next bit should, should go. What do you do to like jog it loose out of your brain? Hmm. I'll, um, I actually like go back and listen to like some some just depending on what kind of genre I'm in, listening to or working on. I'll go back and listen and see how they did it. You know what I mean? And probably like integrate it with mine. If I don't do that, I will actually really just think about how the people want to hear it. And most of the time, it comes in, it comes out the way it's supposed to. You know what I mean? Like, I always try to put myself in the seat of the consumer when I'm making music. You know what I mean? Like, what what do they want to hear opposed to relating to the world? So it's kind of hard trying to gather all of those things one in one bunch to put it into this this massive record. You know what I mean? And so it's it's a process. And some songs take longer than others. But at the end of the day, you get what you make. You know what I mean? And especially when it comes from here, you know, you know, so it's, 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 it's a hit and miss. So, um, what, uh, what did you grow up listening to? Um, listen to, I'm not gonna lie, I used to listen to a lot of East Coast rap. I used to listen to G Unit. Nice. So, as a kid, I used to listen to a lot, you know, uh, Lloyd Banks out of G Unit. Cause yeah, Lloyd, Banks like, Lloyd Banks was dope because he had punchlines. His punchlines was crazy. So I used to, I started off rapping like him, right? One trying to, I used to play him a lot. I used to listen to 50 Cent because he had, he was a hook master. And I was always told like, man, you know, the hooks to hook him in, bring him in with the hooks. So like, I'm not going to lie. So I picked a lot of stuff up from G Unit. Then I heard Eminem. He came out and I started listening to Jay-Z and Tupac, Biggie, you know, just the metaphors, the double entendres, triple entendres, just stuff that you know, make make somebody eyeballs come out. That's what I was like, show me rap. So what I used to do is I used to write show me raps. So people would be like, Oh, you rap? Show me. So I always had this like big structure of show me raps so I could just But I integrated everybody that I listened to into my own thing and here I am. Nice. Nice. Sick. So when when did you start trying to rap? Were you like right out right away or? Oh man, I started rapping when I was like eight years old. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, that's when I realized like, all right, I'm gonna start rapping. This is like after I start feeling like, oh man, I need to cut this out. You know what I mean, like I don't like studio. Uh, then after a moment, something hit me like, Psh, it's time to rap. You know what I mean? After from eight to like eighteen, I was just like trying to like make my dad proud as far as like worthy of rapping so he's a me, tall order when you're eight mm. yeah so it took me like kind of like 10 years to actually really show him because I, I really didn't get real serious until i was like 13 like actually letting people hear what i was doing but it used to be like a a master to sensei thing like you're not ready to go back i used to go to all of these studios and try to polish my craft you know so my pops would record me you know what i mean because he had the, the good equipment yeah yeah, so yeah, like my 18th birthday, I think a little after, I spent some shit for him and showed him a few songs. He was like, "You ready?" Then I was like, my first song with my dad. It was called uh, "What You Reppin." I think it was called "What You Reppin." Yeah, but it was a it was a proud day because it just I felt like I was really in like a military drill type of thing with music. Like, bring me some music that don't have likes in it. Like, you know, I used to try to say like because it was like punch lines. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, bring me a song that doesn't say likes. Bring me a song that doesn't say this. I always make the song better than the next one. Make it sound different than this one. So it was it was kind of stressful. But I get it now. You know what I mean? Just thinking yeah, about it. Right? Yeah, going back, thinking about it, it was kind of like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, good isn't good enough sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. I get it, man. It was right. a journey. Pressure makes diamonds, baby. Right, right. And, I, and I, I'm grateful for that. You know what I mean? That's, that's information that you, you know, you can instill in yourself for the rest of your life. Yeah. So, um, what, uh, like when you're writing melodies and stuff, uh, and singing, uh, how's that different from writing a rap song? Like what makes that, that, that Oh man, that's crazy. Cause it's, it's like, it just depends on the beat. So, you know, I don't know. I can't really explain it, but it really does, does depend on the beat where, 
you know, the melodic, it, you can feel it. I can feel it like when it's time to put like a little serenade or like a little melodic tone here. Like I said, I can hear the music. It's, I guess it's a gift, but I can actually hear it. I can hear myself doing it before it's done. You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to explain when it comes to that. But it just depends, like, you know, your peers, too. Your peers is like you around, like, some lyrical cats. You're going to come out your lyrical bag. You know what I mean? If it's just me, it depends on the beat. If it's around the people, then it's just like you got to mix it up. You know, put your little sauce on it or something like that. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Intuition, I guess. Yeah, it is. actually intuition to where it's like, all right, you're going to come this way with this. It's, it's different angles. It's just, you know, how you can, like I said, attract to the people or what you're saying and how you can relate. And it's not what you're saying is how you say it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some songs that have, like, when you look at the lyrics on paper, you're like, <laughs> what is this? Simplicity. Heard, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's just like, how are you? Man, it's like the writing structure is so crazy because a lot of people don't understand Ooh. the structure of writing when it comes to bars. And one line or to kill your whole line and destroy your whole verse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like just quick revision. Like you said, you go look at the lyrics, man. Some of them be like the easiest words to say on the planet. You know what I mean? Some of them just be so complex. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That I remember. Um, I was playing like a a, a concert for deaf people. It's the world's yeah. first concert for deaf people. Really? In Toronto, and they had these chairs called the emoti chairs that they made at this university, and it had like uh, motors that were like all mm. down your back and, and your legs. Mm. And this was like before the sub pack and everything, like really long time ago, like two thousand maybe two thousand six seven ish, and. Mm. Uh, Actually, maybe 2008. But um, anyway, so they, they had these chairs and they had this concert for deaf people. And as a result, when I was getting my performance ready, I had to like follow these guidelines for getting the performance ready for deaf people and get like uh, like subtitles for all the lyrics. And uh, a, lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the lyrics were in like Patois, you know? And I and, like, was just like, wow, if you're a deaf person and you've never heard a Jamaican person talking... Like seeing Jamaican, like the, the, I was just imagining them, like just like yeah. woo, 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 with all these like Dang. Jamaican lyrics Dang. on the street. I'm yeah. like, what do you that's, even think? That's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. For real, that's wild. It's crazy, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was. It was a yeah. really weird gig, and then I, I didn't realize that like all, um, you know, that like there are different kinds of deaf people kind of like don't like each other. You know, like the people who are like born deaf, uh, yeah. and the people who have become deaf. Like, you think of deaf people as, like, a homogenous group, being, right. like, an outsider. Yeah. But the different kinds of deaf people have very strong opinions about different kinds of deafness, right? And, wow. um, and you know, it's, it can be very easy to upset them accidentally. And right. uh, so I was doing sound check, and it was this, like, tiny little bar, right? And because yeah. uh, they didn't, it was, like, scientists. You know, they were like, how many people is going to come? 50 people, that's probably good enough. Right, so they got this tiny little bar, but then because it was the world's first concert for the deaf, uh, it was like on the news and shit. So they had to do like two showings and stuff. And there's way too many people for this place. And so the people running it were super stressed out because they're a bunch of scientists who'd never done a concert before. Oh, wow. And, uh, so uh, I'm doing the sound check and the, um, and you know, a lot of venues are in mono, especially when they have like an unusual shaped room. Because yeah. sometimes when you have stereo in an unusual shape room, you get cancellation and stuff. So, right. you know, a, a, a large amount of clubs sense. are in mono. And, uh, and I was asking the, this, this was a pretty small club and stuff. And I was talking to the sound guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I learned that things were in mono. And I was like, mono, you know. And I was like, <laughs> what's wrong with mono? And I was like, well, you got two ears, right? Stereo is obviously better. And he's like, what's wrong with hearing with one ear? And then like takes off and I'm like, oh, that's why he was the sound guy is because he was the one with one ear. I'm like, oh, I'm such an asshole right now. It was so embarrassing. Wow. You're just chewing them yeah. off that you can yeah. hear both of Yeah, like ears. grabbing like, my oh, ears and exactly. stuff like a oh, total oh. asshole. Because I figured like he didn't have the accent. He wasn't using sign language. He was talking. Right. It was like, the sound yeah. tech. I'm like, yeah. of course he can hear both ears. Yeah, just cold. assuming like a dick. Wow, dude. <laughs> I know that was like, that's like a want to get away moment. Snickers want to get away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Definitely. he just started doing the sound for my gig, too. I'd like look up at the booth. He'd be like, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, that was pretty weird. It was pretty weird, yeah. but it was it was fun. It was a good story. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. What did doing yeah, that sound in jail in that situation? Uh, I mean, for a DJ, base? you're just kind of making sure the levels are fine and everybody's connected. Because there was like there was like a band and like an experimental electronic act because they, they want to have lots of different music because they're doing yeah. science on like what kind of music do people who've never heard music like the most, you know? So they had like a whole bunch of different genres. Right. So they had to do a lot of changeovers and stuff. Oh, so, nice. Oh, interesting. You know, yeah, that is interesting. Apparently they do balloons too uh, at some of them, oh, but they didn't know that at this one. It's almost all about yeah. the Paris, but there are other, there have been other concerts for deaf people since that have balloons. They all hold them. And then that way everybody can have one balloon. So it's not like you're like all waiting in mind to chair. Right. You know? Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's only a couple of the chairs because they're really expensive. Straight. Already, yeah, pretty, pretty weird gig. What's the reason for the balloons? Oh, because of the vibration, it's and then you can feel the balloons. bass. Yeah, oh, if you hold yeah, it, like okay. if you're out in the crowd, it like it, it's like a transducer right. for the bass vibrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's pretty cool though. How they, you know, integrate the balloons and things like that. Um, but yo, okay, so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about songwriting because, like, I'm I always love interviewing uh, songwriters. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, when you're coming up with uh, lyrics and a track, uh, what are you, are you doing it like? Do you start with the hook, or are you like you get a bunch of lines and then feel your way to the hook, or like you know how do you how do you write that like how do you decide what the hook is? How do you get there? When in the process do you do that? So what I do as far as the hook, um, I really like. Like I said, I listen to it. If I can hear it, like, that's the most thing I like. I'll go for the hook first. Sometimes, maybe the lyrics, I might hear, like, okay. I might hear the last line of an uh, actual verse in the song, but I won't know nothing else. Yeah. But I know how to go about it when it comes to the hook. You know what I mean? Or sometimes the hook could just come quick. Like, somebody. Like, yeah. I heard, tell me if you want somebody. And I'm like, okay. I don't know how the sound on it. But I'm gonna do it. Yeah, because I hadn't known you to sing before that one. Yeah, man, I, I do it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't really, I didn't really like put that part of myself out as far as music, you know. But I, I see that it's working. Yeah, you know it's I mean? definitely working. It, you know, so I'm, I'm gonna keep, keep on like making records like that. But this project that I'm coming out with is actually gonna be the melodic, that type of sound. You know what I mean? Sweet, yeah. sweet. I'm into it. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's talk about toxic. Um, I, I love that. I love that tune. I think that tune is like, is right, right there too. You know, like it's got a lot of, a lot of heart and a lot of vibe and everything. Um, yeah. can you tell us about writing that tune. All right. So toxic was just basically about a previous, uh, situation I had with someone and, you know, it was just basically saying, you know, we fall out, we get back, you know, fall out, get back. And I was just, I just wanted to really like, you know, put it out as far as it was like a, a sense of venting, not for a cry for help or anything like that. It was just like, a, let me get this off my chest. And it came out, it came out tight, dude. I, I didn't, I wasn't really, you know what I mean? I was just expressing myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it feels very personal, like very from the heart, but uh, yeah. it definitely slaps. It slaps. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, I just try to, like I said, I try to relate to everybody. Everybody goes through that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, at some point. At some yeah, point. at some point. At some point in their life, they've been through that. So, they be like, dude, I feel you, man. I know where you're coming from. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe it can be like something healing for them or something. So. Yeah, sometimes like the like humans are like more alike than we are different, you know. And sometimes mm -hmm. like, something is like really, really personal and specific. Yeah. And they fit more relatable in mm -hmm. a way, you know. Like right. you know, you're like, oh, these all these details make it someone else's life, but it's somehow the details make it more vivid and like it makes it so that you exactly feel it more. You, hit, you hit it right on the nose dude that's exactly what it is sometimes you gotta be vulnerable man and sometimes you never know who who needs that yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean so at this point i don't really do music just for me i do it for what i need to hear yeah music is yeah. medicine man straight up like there's there's times when you're having like <laughs> the worst time and you just need to listen to the saddest fucking song and it's somehow makes you less sad and i'm like how does that work like it's yeah. a paradox you know oh 
Yeah, man, it's, it's a few songs that really got me through as, like, a kid. And, um, like, for instance, like, like I said, uh, Lloyd Banks is called uh, When I Was Down. Yeah. The hook was, uh, <clears throat> damn, it feels good when you come up. Cause I remember how it was when I was down. So it was like that. That was one of the songs that made me happy when I, you know, fell down. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of understand that. Like certain songs. And my, I was talking to my uncle about this yesterday. He was like, I was in the studio cooking up some beats uh, yesterday, and he was like, you know, you ever realize that you sit here and you make these beats and you make these records, but you don't know who who you're soothing you know you don't know who's actually listening to this and they're getting through a problem in their life and i was just sitting there like yeah that's crazy because think about it guys we do music but you don't know who playing your music right now somebody yeah. is in the room playing one of y'all tunes right now and i mean connecting with it who knows where right is getting played right it's, it's <laughs> somebody playing that somewhere. Yeah, that's that's so what I'm funny. saying. So you, sometimes you got to sit back and think about that, man. Like, you know, even if like somebody is really like, okay, this dude really helped me. It happened to me one time, like um, a song called uh, The Phase. I was at a party and a guy walked to me, up to me. He was like, you know, um, I met him before. He's like, yo, uh, you El Gates, right? I'm like, yeah. He was like, dude, The Phase helped me through so much man this and that and i was like yo i just, just grabbed my heart man like yo this yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cool. i don't know what i was speechless you know what i'm saying but at that moment i realized like you never know So i just try to make some heartfelt shit man or just like some something that's gonna hit a nerve there's probably yeah. someone out there who has like a, a deep fear of high-heeled shoes it's going to hear toxic <laughs> and they're going to be like, yeah. that's exactly how I feel about those fucking shoes. Exactly. <laughs> I hate high heels. Uh, like, exactly, I bro. can't look at the cover, but yeah. I, love <laughs> I love the track. I love the track, but I can't look at the cover. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Just like, yeah. You know, are you, are you, you okay with high heel shoes now? Like, you're not like... PTSD when you see them. Ah, right? uh, nah, man. I love I love girls with high heels, man. It's just it's just um the person in the high heels. You know okay, saying? cool. So yeah, yeah no smoke yeah. to the high heels. It's, it's, no, it's no smoke whatsoever. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, okay, man. No. Um, all right, well, well, hey, uh, I think it's time for us to talk about the fans out there. You know, I think that's a nice natural segue to the fans. Um, do you have anything to say? to all the people who listen to your music, because there's not a lot of L. Gates interviews out there. This is your, this is your chance to say say something, you know? Do you have anything to say to him? Oh, man, I just want to say thank you guys for rocking with me. It's been a journey. Um, it was a lot of people that started with me that is not around anymore, you know, due to, you know, not having a drive. I still love y'all, but I'm still going. Um, I want to say uh, great music coming up. I want to thank you guys once again for all the great things that you guys have done up to this point um just want to say it's gonna be a great one man that's i'm just grateful that's all oh yeah and yeah. uh I, I i got a message for the ill gates fans out there What's and that? that's that you're gonna look really good in the somebody merch toxic merch we designed those clothes for you and we know you're gonna look great in them I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm gonna have to really like about when I when I get my merch, man, and show it off. I'm gonna just just walk up to people and say, "Look at look at look at my threads." Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it always feels good. Always no, feels good. Thanks, bro. Good. Thanks. I, well, um, I think uh, it's probably time to uh, to to let people know where they can find you on the internet. Like, where where do they catch up with uh, with you, and how do how do they not confuse you with me? Because you know we're totally oh, yeah. doppelgangers. Yeah. yeah, we're we're brothers from another mother, man. You know what I'm saying? And it's been like that for years. Um, you guys can you can Google me, Google me. L Gates, I L L G number eight letter Z. And uh, hey. every time I pop up, you'll see my Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Spotify, all the streaming platforms, songs, pictures, whatsoever. That's it's pretty great. The uh, the number eight definitely does wonders for our SEO. Without yeah. that number eight, who knows? You know, we, might, both we might have had to we might have had to like uh, you know straight yeah. confusion yeah. a lot more. Yeah. But that number eight that makes Bro. it all good, baby. I swear, like it's crazy because I believe. Um, I think you are the reason that I changed it to an eight. Oh, 
What was it before? I was like, it was Ill Gates. I, I, it was G A T D S. But then I was like, it's either gonna be G E I G H. You know what I'm saying? T for Gates. Yeah. Or G number A letter Z. So it just made it unique. Yeah, the yeah. eight definitely works. It's it's yeah. easier, and 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 that because like there was people weren't running out of usernames so bad back then, so it wasn't as normal. Where <laughs> yeah, usernames is like they they're they're filling up fast, and it's like at this point it's gonna be like Dude, people got like underscores in their artist name and shit now. I'm like, oh, yeah. we're using like underscores, right? It's getting bad. It's getting real bad. I'm glad like I solidified the name, and you know what I mean. Yeah, bro, I didn't want to, you know. uh intertwining what you had going on but i did find out before i had sat i was sitting down you know rolling up when i had to find out a new name the name before ill gates and this is like years ago was like a uh, swish swish that's a good name i actually used to have a goldfish named swish really I lived seven years my childhood goldfish oh my God. and i named it swish so that's Yet you another layer so of crazy connected. coincidences. See? Oh my god. That's wow. And like goldfish don't live seven years. Like that's weird, you know? Crazy. See, that's what I'm saying. And I, I was so like fucking yeah. weird. Yeah. Because yeah. his last name is Dylan and my first name is that's Dylan. And we both independently picked Ill Gates' names, and now we're learning we both also independently picked Swish. Yeah. Wow. What? What else is there? Oh my god. Yeah. We'll find out more once we <laughs> actually link up and we're going to be sitting here talking more. And That's we, crazy. And do more shit, man. Trust me. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that is crazy, crazy. I man. know. Like, I mean. Wow. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it's weird. Then maybe it's just like, I'd like, maybe the universe is just like, let's see how many weird coincidences before they go insane. Like, let's just like, see? let's uh, just keep. Keep giving them, like, what do you think the level? There's, like, two gods, like, gambling and shit. And they're like, yeah. I think they'll crack after the next one. Yeah. You know? Be like, yeah, how much you want to bet? Type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I believe it's probably going to be more and watch. Yeah, there's probably, right. at this point, there's going to be more. Totally. Well, stay tuned, dear viewers and listeners. Find out what other bizarre yeah. Bill Gates doppelganger <laughs> coincidences there are in store. Stay the next tuned. Doppelganger Z. Yes, <laughs> the stereo <laughs> Ill Gates is. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's big, man. That's dope. Uh, that is pretty it. wild. So, uh, yeah, what, what what do you think about the record out there? Um, you know, let us know what you think about the record. Let us know what you think about the the clothes. Um, you know, any questions that you want to ask us? I'm sure we'll meet up again the next time the record comes out. Uh, so if you have any questions for future interviews, far them off. I'm sure uh, Morel and I will both be pretty active in the comments and everything, and uh, DJ on as well. Um, and uh, yeah, please like and share the uh, the record. And uh, we made a big folder of viral videos for you that you can actually oh. post and not even give us any credit because they're more likely to go viral if you just don't mention the, the music in them. All right. <laughs> just post them. Post them on your social media accounts. They've been going crazy viral for us. One of the, like, I have one hit 16 million plays. So get some free traffic on your socials. Go use those viral videos. <laughs> Check Thanks out the merch at the link. And uh, yeah, have a great day. And uh, maybe, you know, if you got a special someone in your life, play them somebody. And they'll know how you feel. Oh, that, that, was, that was amazing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Word up. Lots of love, everybody. Peace out.